In this video, I'm going to race against my 3D printer to see who can build a miniature version of Dracula's castle faster. No, not the real Brands Castle from Transylvania. I've been there as a kid and while it is an awesome castle, it pales in comparison to what popular culture has transformed it into. And I didn't want to make it easy on the printer or myself in this challenge. This was going to be something that would take more than a week to print out on two FDM printers running in parallel. About four weeks ago, I started modeling the actual 3D castle based on images, feedback, and ideas from my viewers. I actually streamed some of the design process of the build to my patrons and YouTube members, which I will probably do again if you guys want to tune in. Before we start the race, let's take a second to meet our contestants. Welcome to the first ever Man vs. Machine exhibition match. In this corner, we have the machines, a dynamic tag team duo made up of the gargantuan LK5 from Longer, as well as the nimble FL Sun Super Racer. Both machines capable of running 24-7 as long as there is no power outage, need for troubleshooting, or filament runout mid-print. Representing the human race, we have NARB, capable of using any recycled material, and dexterous enough to operate a few crude power tools, NARB is able to slice cardboard at a rate of 2-3 to three cuts per second. Weaknesses may include a need for food, sleep, and frequent breaks. Easily distracted attention span will need to periodically check on the 3D printers for filament running out of prints, not sticking to the bed. Call your doctor to see if speed crafting is right for you. And with that, let's start! Alright, well, that was a bit dramatic, I'm sorry. Um, Let's bring this back down to reality. What the heck are we even building and how? Well, given that the printers start out with a fully optimized and configured design, I figured I would give myself a similar luxury. So, using a two-dimensional printer, I exported the top, front, and side views of the castle, at the same scale that the 3D printed ones would be coming at us. This should make it relatively similar to the final outcome of the machines. These views are basically exported straight from Blender's wireframe view, and taped together as best as I could. My intention was that if I got stuck on any particular dimension, I'd be able to reference the drawings and get a good approximation of the proportions. My starting material is going to be a shock to many of you, I assume. Or not. It's practically always going to be corrugated cardboard. It's free, easy to work with, and quite sturdy if configured correctly. My scrap cardboard is sometimes very warped or dented, so I take the time and scoring off the pieces and getting myself clean edges. This helps keep the overall structure from getting too wonky. We're going to be building a series of boxes for most of the skeleton in the castle. Boxes are so ubiquitous in crafting, don't you think? You can usually decompose anything you want to make that was man-made into a series of boxes and maybe some cylinders thrown in. Speaking of cylinders, we're going to be using this upcycled peanut butter container and a spent roll of packing tape. There. We're getting through our basic foundation pretty quickly. Wonder how the 3D printers are doing. Well, they have a bit more of a modest showing so far. I'm feeling pretty good about my progress. From here, we're basically just going to continue layering boxes on boxes. Making sure to reference the model at each step, I'm trying to slightly undersize the structure from the model on paper, since I will be layering on brick details and other features to bulk it out from the bare cardboard. After building up the structure a bit more and seeing that the printers hadn't even finished their first print, I decided to go to bed. I think the first batch of prints will be done in the morning, so I'll check up on you then. Oh, looks like they finished their first prints. I do need to pop the parts off the plate and clean off those supports, which does eat into some of my crafting time, but hey, these turned out pretty nice to be honest. The machines have the advantage of spitting out fully detailed chunks all in one go, so it's going to be a bit hard to compare from now on on the progress that each of us is making. Time to craft a bit more. You'll see here I'm using these large cardboard tubes. Some of them are from gift wrap paper, aluminum foil rolls, or basically any other cardboard tube I've come across in the past year, which I save in a bin with my other crafting materials. I was feeling pretty good about my progress at this point, so I wanted to do some prep for a D&D &D game I had coming up this week. I've been wanting to try out a non-5th edition game for a while now, and decided to start a campaign around the EZ D6 system. 
Made by the legendary DM Scotty, this system lets you get right into the action, encouraging your players to improvise on the spot, and getting rid of a lot of those needless and restrictive rules for what players can and can't do. I'm not even being paid to say this, I've purchased this book with my own cash and so far I love it. For the session coming up, my players are going to be delving into an ancient Sumerian tomb. I didn't have any good minis to represent the monsters inside, so I printed off some of these one-page rules mummified undead for that purpose. Oh, and these bases? I designed them myself and printed them on my SLA printer. They're available as STLs in various common sizes on my Patreon page if you want. Link in the description. Mm, oh, what's that? Oh, the castle build, right. Well, it seems like they've accomplished quite a lot. Let me assemble some of these 3D printed parts so we can compare the progress at this point. I'm using just a mixture of hot glue and sprue glue to get these joined up in various places. Some of the holes I designed for the crosswalks are a bit snug, so I use a pair of snips and sanding to get them to line up right. It seems like I've got some catching up to do, so let's roll. This section here is going to be levitating in midair. I put in some barbecue skewer sticks to anchor it to the main building. These will be a bit stronger than hot glue alone as it gives more of a mechanical support. to add this connector here at 45 degrees so I take the time to get the angles right. The goal is to have the towers mostly vertical facing in the end. All the vertical lines should be somewhat parallel. And yeah that's the cardboard frame done. Now for the details. But before we jump into those one thing I'm noticing is the structure is a bit back heavy when I added that floating wing in the back. Let's fix that by adding some weight to the base. I was looking around for something to use and I have this container of random screws and hardware for my Kia furniture built up over the years. I actually don't have a really good use for it as it's quite specialized, so I decided to use it as weight. I seal off the container with some hot glue and cardboard and then I glue it on the inside of the castle structure. To add bricks and stones or other details, I got myself a new tool. This is a wood burning soldering iron. It comes in a kit with various tips for engraving and burning wood designs but I'm going to be using it for XPS foam. Similar approach. It's a different style of texture than if I was going to do this with a knife and indenting the cuts with force. It gives uh, larger grout lines and more pronounced features. It's sort of cartoony in a way, but I like it. From a wide shot, it tracks really well. Plus, you can carve in windows and other details after the fact quite easily. I'm taking this approach all over the base, adding bricks, trim, corner pieces, then engraving away some stone segments to make it look built up. For the curved section here, I cut out some thin XPS sheets and bent them around the peanut butter container. After the glue had dried, I took the same approach as before, scoring and marking the windows and bricks after the fact. I like using bobby pins to keep the XPS sheets in place as I work because I'm mostly using tacky PVA glue. The pins do a great job at providing just enough force to keep the parts in place until the glue sets. Before we get much further, I wanted to see how plaster would interact with this approach. This idea is stolen from watching Night Shift's video on brick walls. I'm taking some dry plaster dust and sprinkling it over the top of the wall, and I then come in with a brush, periodically spreading the dust around to look more natural. Finally, I carefully spray it and get it wet until it softens and the chemical process starts to solidify. This is a mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. When this dries, it looks quite realistic. As I continue on, adding more and more details, working my way up the castle. Unfortunately, this process took quite a bit longer than I anticipated. During my push in the race, it had already been close to a week and a half since the 3D printers started churning out plastic, and the final print had just finished its time on the bed, and it was time to assemble the final plastic model. I had initially set out to prove that I could beat the 3D printer in a race to craft this castle, but I ended up learning an important life lesson myself. In my head, I could have finished it easily if it had been my number one priority scrapping anything else I was doing during the day to work on it. But as you know, life gets in the way sometimes. The truth of the matter is a 3D printer, once configured and maintained, has none of these flaws. It'll dutifully chug and craft for you even when you get sick, have to make an appointment, or get distracted for other projects. In any case, I took the final assembled version of the 3D printed castle outside to paint. I sprayed it with some browns, purples, teals from the side, and white from above. I do have some epic plans for this castle going forward, including finishing up the paint scheme, including some accompanying cliffs for it to sit on, and maybe a full village in the surrounding valley. 
I even have some ideas for the half completed version of the castle as well. But I would love to hear your ideas down in the comments as well. This won't be the last you see of this castle. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one too.